Hello there everyone and welcome back to Tier No the Lassies of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Siberian Free Territory Level, but right now we have to talk about inspiring progressive thought. Control of education is of the utmost importance to the security of the free territory, while the military council would like to leave the communes educators to their own devices. It would invite subversion and reaction ideas to the indoctrinated. To be indoctrinated into our nation's youth, anarchism as a whole would be threatened if the military doesn't step in to prevent its collapse. The fifth call must be stopped at that end. We'll create an all-encompassing curriculum that will teach both the basics necessary for the students to function as adults as well as professing the tenets of anarchism. And we'll follow up with this one. Expand research cooperatives. Russia has been left behind the rest of the world in many aspects, but perhaps most significantly is in technological process or progress. While TVs became common for the American households, radios were considered a luxury here. While jet fighters were being developed in Japan, we repaired Bukharan era planes. While in Germany stockpiled thousands of nuclear warheads, we are yet to build a single one. To remedy this, community research initiatives must be supported and encouraged greatly. The innovation that brought the Ukrainian Black Army, the Tonka, must bring ours. Tanks and jets, but what does the status say? Teaching was a natural calling to Nikolai. Many were in it for the status or becoming, or because their fathers had been teachers before them and their fathers before them in the days of the Tsar. Some moaned and groaned as they got the privilege of being forced into it by their affluent parents. Imagine that today, a Russian fighting and cursing because he had to get an education. Most would kill a man just to know how to read. That was precisely the reason why Nikolai did what he did, because he found people and their unending quest for knowledge fascinating. Even the most brutish black army soldier had questions, that's what kept them human even as they gunned down their enemies. Animals they are. While the gen or when the General Assembly made a general call for teachers or for those willing to become them, Nikolai rushed to answer the call. Which is precisely how he ended up in Kansk. The city transformed from the beating hot of the territory to just another city. Nikolai found the prospect of the city of the revolution being lost to history a terrifying one and noted he ought to make it one of the main subjects of his daily lesson. Mr. Zoldin, his pupils cry as he entered the room. The humble teacher wasted no time getting into the lesson, picking up the chalk and drawing a hammer and sickle on the board. The hammer and sickle. The symbol of not only Bukharan but of Yagoda. Separately, these men or these tools mean nothing but when they are put together, what do they represent? They show the common tools of the worker united. The sound on the surface level like something we ought to rally behind, but... Nikolai paused for dramatic effect, prompting his students to look up from their notes to me and met eyes with their instructor. This is the prime example of what we must be most aware of. The state will wear many clothes to try and trick you into being their puppet. There is only one symbol that represents freedom, that is the hand, the people hand in hand, nothing else. Teach them well and all will be well. As we expand the power grid, we could do that. I don't want to hurt debt too much, but slightly increase pollution regulations. Stability? Ah, screw it, we'll do it anyways, because debt? Well, it's already 52.5% from jet... Jet debt to GDP ratio. Ah, good, good, good. Ensure rural interconnection? Not bad. Facilitate rural mechanization? Yes. One of the important features of communal life is self-sufficiency. While this is often not possible given that the more rural communities simply do not have the skilled labor or industrial facilities to produce things like modern electronics or automobiles, we can set these communities up with the means to acquire such items by facilitating mechanization in the rural areas of the free territory. We can help rural com communes outproduce their needs. Allowing them to exchange extra produce and livestock for items the rural population cannot obtain. Not to mention, having an agricultural surplus will be useful for expanding the population. Oh, and we go to experience industrial base. Awesome. Look at that. Very, very good. This is how to development increase. Nice. 4.88 is okay. Uh, industrial management, nice. Not bad. 53.3 is not great, but we're still working on it. We're still working on improving our industry as much as possible. And best scientific research? Yes. Please. Please. And right now, what are we doing? We are trying to empower the General Assembly. More socialism here. Please and thank you. Uh, and I, I love this page so much. I, I love it probably too much. I might just do a temp tax hike. We might do civilian austerity. Maybe eventually sometime, but probably honestly not. Uh, deficit's not looking too good. So we're spending a lot on the social expenditures, which, you know, I want us to get as much social spending as possible, but we'll see. We'll definitely see. But, but that's all right. Cool. All right, almost over that, but a couple comments include, uh, apparently I made the mistake of saying thermoelectric, or thermonuclear, not thermoelectric, so I thought this was a thermonuclear plant, or one of these was, Hungry Sides of Italy, but it's a thermoelectric plant, as you guys did say, my bad, I, th I saw thermo, and I'm like, hmm, warmth, but anyways, uh, we're also, we got this, 8.44, not bad, research facilities, not bad, agriculture is going up quite nicely, admin efficiency, industrial expertise, organized chaos, of course, equipment's not bad, and this is not too bad either, granted, economic autonomy, good. More political power, please. Yes, 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 yes. And 15 days left for that. It's not too bad. After this one, ensure a rural interconnection. Ooh, peace conference. Oh. Oh, okay then. Provide schools for all. That's going to be... Ooh. Oh, Kuzik unifies the Far East. Oh, boy. The right to well-being. Poverty will begin to rapidly improve. I kind of like that one a lot. 
That seems like a lot of fun to me. Let's keep doing that one too. The right to well-being ensure rural interconnection. There are rural regions of the free territory that are simply unfit for major industrialization and expansion. These regions are either too isolated or not populous enough, or an area vulnerable to foreign invasion for these areas. The best we can do is extend infrastructure to connect the territories to our own. This can be done in a variety of ways, from building actual roads or railroads, to setting up phone lines or simpler telegraph lines, to extending the power grid in other territory. This won't provide manufacturing jobs to these people, but hopefully allow them to attain somewhat of a higher living of standard. Standard of living. Oh, okay, good job, guys. Higher standard, not living standard, but standard of living. Basically the same thing. Oh, and there it goes, Austin. Goodbye, Austin. Oh, man. What, who's going to win? The communists? Oh, no, Bukharanists versus the revolutionary frontists. Motion passed. Yay. Look at all that PP. Look at all that socialism. Ah, we love socialism here. Show motions. Uh, industrial committee. Less ability, more debt ceiling. That actually, you know what? We're going to need that immediately. Oh, we don't have a lot of support, do we? Um, what do we want? Anything for our comrades? please. Zero, oppose, all right. Some support equipment, that's fine with us. And what do you want here? Some more support equipment? Nice. I love two-thirds majority democracy. How is this bad, 55? Ah, so not too bad. I am tempted to do a tax, cut. tax hike, I mean. I haven't done one in a while, for a very long time. 5.66% is not too bad, though. Mm, not too shabby. Another comment was, someone says we should choose authoritarian Democrat options if there are no socialist options when we have decisions. Hey, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We'll definitely see. So that wouldn't be too bad. Uh, we'll spend more money, but what else, you know? Uh, infrastructure is very nice to get to. I love infrastructure. A tragic, tragic day. And then the right to well-being. Just as Peter Kropotkin wrote, vague proclamation of the right to work or to teach or each the whole result of his labor are insufficient. Not one individual should be left behind in a pursuit of a truly free and equal society. Some may say that the scars the war left on Russia make sacrifices necessary. And inequality and unfortunate fact, we see such excuses as what they are. The lives of an elite class wishing to consolidate the growth, growing wealth of Russia into their own hands. Every kilowatt hour that our energy production grows, every good that leaves the production line, every building that finishes construction should be a victory, which the common man can reap the benefits of. Well, being for all is not a dream, my friends. Not a dream at all. Oh! Oh, I'll see what happens, Long Yoon. Good luck, Long Yoon. Good luck. Oh, I actually went down a little bit. That's kind of nice. Even though that's a lot of deficit. Republic of China. Oh, come on. I want to see the NPA win. Can the NPA actually win? Ultra militarism. Jinan unification. Go, 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 go. Property relief. Oh yes. Don't even look at this stuff. Just, just get it. Just get it. Just do it. Fifty-seven percent is not bad. Not bad. And we're at sixty-seven. Two-thirds of people live in poverty, which is not good, obviously, but still, the right to well-being. And then provide schools for all. Here's a more population to tax. Education is a powerful tool. The increasing literacy of the European working classes in the 19th century catalyzed the growth of socialist movements. As political theory was no longer the dominant or domain of intellectuals alone, not only this, but the education of the masses led to an unprecedented, unprecedented growth in production and technology. Unfortunately, as a mostly rural and unstable region, Central Siberia lacks the school coverage and quality of more developed areas. It is imperative that the new schools be constructed to ensure the entirety of our population has access to quality education. Oh, we're getting up to 6%. Oh, that's spiked up a little bit more. Oh, that's not nice. That's not nice. Two billion for military spending. Wow. Because we do have 25 divisions, which is quite a bit. But you know what? we got to be ready for all the wars that are coming our way. Because we, my friends, as you probably can tell, we're going to have a lot of wars from here on out. And these guys are going to have to be 40 combo with as well, so. If they're not already. Did we make a 40 combo? I can't remember. I don't think we did. No. No, they're pretty basic. Oh, God, no. Oh, that's fine, though. Whatever. Mm, extraction two. Get some more prison stuff. Why not? So I need less prisons overall. Well, she passed. Great. Anything else around here? No. Good. Like army training to more army professionalism. Oh yes, please. A lot of these people oppose it. We must stand together, my friends. Of course we will. Oh no no no. That's minus four. Holy crap. Minus three is quite a bit. Minus two is better. Manpower. They support us. And it's fine. 62. I love it. Of course, it's only 66. We got quite a while until we can go to war with some other people, but that's okay. The right to well-being. Schools, yes, please. And we're at 60%. Yep. Close. Oh, military has 30. Oh, no. Keep heading. 1.9. National debt's kind of high. What if we cut this one, too? 
But I, don't, I just don't want to do that. I don't want to lose political power. 0.8, huh? Not bad. No right to well-being, though. And what do you mean defined by rapidly improve poverty? That's my question. But whatever. I have plenty of questions. Since we're here anyways... Oh, hello. Make sure you go there. Come on, game. What the heck? There you go. We're going to make these guys 40 combo with eventually, so you might as well just throw this on there, too. We're going to have support equipment. That's fine. I don't really care. Um, after providing schools for all, get more political power. We lose political power, I think, too, right? Do we? P policy cost per capita. Oh, that's going to be really bad for us. Uh, reach for the dawn. More Hungarian socialism. Lessons from the Union. Well, it seems like we'll probably have to go with the one on the right here. Reach for the dawn. Encourage Constantine. So, we'll go with that way. Oh, despotism. Eh, three council unions. We'll just encourage this one. The Constancy, our militant workers organization that have existed in the area before we arrived. While our politics are not perfectly aligned with our, with our leadership, seemingly leaning towards pre-war Bukharanist philosophy as opposed to our more radical and radical communist policies, their organizational expertise and influence could provide incredible usefulness to us. Their leadership has indicated that they are not opposed to working alongside us and have offered assistance in the implementation of our redesigned Siberian plan. We would be fools not to accept their offer. So much needs to be done. Oh my goodness, for the military and whatnot. Oh boy, so much needs to be done. Economy? Oh, it's still climbing high. What if we did? This is really not good to do. It costs quite a bit of political power. It gives us 15% more money, but um, impacting your growth for the next six months. Actually, 0.6, that's not bad. This helps us out just slightly, maybe. Slightly, but still. Nice. Lots of industry. Oh, it's a construction. Ooh, not bad. Peace has been brought to Vietnam. We could really use more army bases, though. And they recommend putting one in Azlinovsky. Army base. Or really, military base. Where is it? Azlinovsky. Ah. Reach for the dawn. Rapid economic planning both restricts the rights of our citizens and harms our economy long term. If we truly wish to see Russia prosper and the glory of the communism prevail, we must abandon these authoritarian ideals, ideas of controlling the economy through the state. Bukharin tried and failed. If we wish to see true prosperity, we must allow workers, organizations, and unions to decide for themselves what to produce as a natural reaction to the needs and demands of society and the economy. While some decry such a system as capitalism under another name, we reject such a title. This is true, a true socialist economy. More Kyrian, more social, uh, socialism support. Agriculture begins to improve. Poverty rates will begin to slowly improve. And our inflation decreased by 0.15, which is not bad. And it kind of becomes more decentralized. The black dress. The wedding, the long plan to look forward to by most in attendance was as befitting the territory of the black army and an anarchic affair. An anarchic affair. Not archaic, but anarchic. The brides arrive first, both on leave from the militias of their respective communes, also both wearing matching black dresses and blazing with the army's sigil. Modifications in order to allow them to comfortably sling the rifles have been expertly integrated. The priest arrives second, his clerical uniform strained or stained and the submachine gun scuffed from the day's entrenchment training end. The guests arrive third, each forming up behind the communes' bride and bearing the marks of their own daily militia activity. Although the communes agreed on the need for the collective action against people, enemies without, in truth there was much tension between them, put aside only enough to ensure that the special moment for their respective daughters was not interrupted in short order. The priests officiated and the brides exchanged vows both to the black army and to each other before sealing them with a kiss. Cheers quickly turned into jeers, however, as with the ceremony itself not completed and the alcohol brought forward, long-standing disputes emerged once again. One guest swung at another from the other communes who responded by dislocating his arm. The priest struck a reveler uh, with a thrown bottle, knocking him flat. A general brawl followed, although all were careful to not use their weapons. They were, after all, allies in anarchism. As one bride broke the nose of her new wife's cousin, she laughed in delight before helping him to his feet, knowing that they would fight together against their community enemies for many years to come. A very strange wedding indeed. Very strange. Uh, even more socialism now? I mean, it wouldn't be bad, but we're kind of maxing it out already. I, mm, I want more GDP. I want more infrastructure. Uh, ah, screw it. Get the PP. We like PP here. Oh, whoops. Was that the wrong one? That's fine. Well, we're going to lose PP to get PP. And man, there you go. There you go. Was it worth it? Sure. I just want to improve society, man. That's all I want to do. I just want to improve society. Is that too much to ask for? Oh, still going up, huh? Flatlining, huh? That's not good. 
A lot of expenditures. We got a lot of expenditures. So, but how's construction looking after we improve some of this? Some more army bases still? Peace conference? Oh, is Rakuta dead? No, doesn't look like it. Or is this West Africa? It's probably West Africa, I don't think. No, it's Ukraine. No, I was wrong, Ukraine. Another comment was, uh, let's see. Oh, Mexico will get content in the surfing or shifting tides update. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, TNO is still in development, so we'll see. Deal? Deal. Shifting tides. Eventually, I will pull Mexico a whole bunch, probably. If a deal just adjusted his collar, he at least wanted to look nice, even if they wouldn't. Pietor had given him instructions ad, nause ad nauseum. If it hadn't been for a snowstorm, Sido would have been here himself, but it didn't work out that way. Whatever, Fadil thought. He wasn't even sure which concessions to grant them. They lived in an anarchist society. What do they want? More freedoms? Fadil pushed open the door to the meeting room. He sighed, setting his papers and coffee on the table. Afternoon, gentlemen, he said, pulling back a chair and plopping it down into it. They didn't look like the radicals they had been described as. They just looked like men. Men who worked on electric boxes and in factories. And again, when one lives amongst the most radical, re nothing really stands out as off kilter. I understand you're looking to, uh, no, 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 I'll take it back. You tell me why you're here. The leader of the organization began an obviously rehearsed speech. We, the workers of Siberia, have demanded one thing since the first revolution. To not be slaves and be seen as equals. We are the ones who provide everything to keep the society operating smoothly if we go on. Video will cut the man off strike. Yeah, I know. We don't really understand your perspective. What more can we offer you than total freedom? Foreman shook his head. It's more than just freedom. It's about representation as well. If you don't want to grind this free territory to a standstill, you'll permit the creation of an intercommunal body of trade unions. Well, now will be able to petition the General Assembly as they wish, and can strike without fear of the Black Army retaliation. Fidio tinkered with the idea in his mind a bit, and it wasn't a small order, but it didn't seem like something Pseudo would be opposed to. Fidio stood and extended a, a hand. I think we have a deal, Mr. Fidio glanced to the four man's name tag. Mr. Kosten? Dale. Nah. The Guardians of the Revolution. The Free Territory's boards are always at risk. Warlords, bandits, raiders, other statists always stand ready to raid and loot our cities and towns at the drop of a dime. It's become necessary to begin reforming the militia into a full-fledged army. In order to achieve this, we'll need to invest in more specialized equipment like anti-tank, anti-air, sniper weapons, in order to increase our army's effectiveness. Additionally, we'll need to begin increasing the discipline of our army. These men can no longer be simply volunteer, be volunteer farmers. They must be soldiers, and we will drill this into them. I always come back to this page. Oh, you got it worse. Oh, crap. That's my bad. Well, 0.3% growth, that's not great. Especially with this. For this, was it worth it? Not really, no. Temp tax height, wasn't really worth it. Especially with inflation rising more. Uh, oh, military behold uh, Muscovine. But hey, that poverty rate, less than two-thirds of a population live in poverty. Not, not by much, but it's still two-thirds. Ooh, it's functional high command. Widespread cronyism, we get there next, nice. Um, we get more political power? No, with similar political power, we actually lose the plus 15% Recruitable population factor. What's the point then? The difference is between these two, you get plus five percent division recovery rate and ten percent more planning and max planning. Is that it? And five percent more naval organization, which means nothing. Some stuff for air, and that's it. That's not. That's not great. Ooh. Invest in construction. That goes up. Sixty-six point six percent. Oh boy. Eventually, we will start slashing quite a bit if we have to. We just got to balance everything out. So. Maintain the flawless legacy versus welcome the rehabilitated. Ooh, I'd like to do that one. It makes more sense to do that one, but uh, maintain the flawless legacy probably. Ooh, improved academic base though. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Oh, hello. It just it just bypassed. Okay, well, we just got primary schooling, so so we got let's see, ten percent more research speed, more ten percent more factory output, five percent more efficiency growth. 2.5% more GDP growth multiplier. Need to consumer goods went down by 1.5%. And, oh, we got even better monthly poverty decrease. 3.5%, huh? Alright. Could be better, could be worse. Uh, I want to do looking outwards first. Geopolitics is a game of diplomacy intact, just as much as it is armies and wars, in order to secure the free territories. We must assess their standing with their neighbors to the west and east to assess whether they are a threat to us or not, and if they are, to assess how much of a threat they actually pose. And should we find ourselves to be fortunate to share a border with a nation friendly to the free territory, arranging some trade deals or defensive pacts might serve to benefit our interests. The Workers' Territory. I don't know how to run a factory, Aliyev. Uh, uh, Aliyev. Normal people don't know what these things. The woman slapped her hands on her sides in an exasperation. She loved Aliyev, but he was her first and only love, but God did it get on her nerves. Spending 20 years with a man would do that to a person. Her husband only scoffed, setting his notes from the assembly on the dinner table. He shook his head as he walked to their room, kicking off his shoes by the door. She peered over from the side of the table as she was sitting at and scanned over the notes. Did Peter really say that? I mean, Aliyev, you, you understand that this is not a victory for us, right? You've got a kid and a half. She rubbed her enlarged stomach at the thought of her husband being responsible for the house was one issue. Running an entire workers' co-op fit to challenge industrial might of the East and West was an impossibility. 
Other than you have rounded the corner back into the kitchen, his tie hanging, uh, dangling loosely around his neck. The Siberian plan was a disaster, Anastasia. I know you are smart enough to recognize that. It trapped workers' rights in the name of security. Security! Which, for the record, never came. I mean, just look at where we are now. Anastasia massaged her forehead. Why was her husband such a brute? Not everything was an ideological struggle. Sometimes the politics of a decision mattered much less than the pragmatic effects. So you have, you're, you're gonna have two kids rampaging throughout this house. I can't do it alone. I understand this means everything to you, and it means so much to me, but not everything is a battle. She stood and walked to her partner, planting a kiss on his cheek. Aliyev digested this message, debating it within his head. Anastasia, my love, you know I would do anything for you. I, I want a better world for our children, that's all I want. His spouse sighed and returned to their seat. Fine, she thought, but if this blows up, she reserved the right to tease him about it. Nice. Four together. Probably. Oh, lose two production units. Oh, that sucks. Bro, that sucks. What? For the kids? Oh, god, no. We're gonna need some more. Motion passed. Nice. Look out. What do we do with the peepee -pee, then? Um, research? I mean, I wanna do this one, but we don't really need to. More research might not be bad. More manpower, maybe? Spent a thermal electric plant, it's not bad either. I guess more GDP, why not? Screw it. I think more GDP. Let's talk, we lose some PP. Ooh, negative three is pretty bad. Negative three is pretty bad. Negative one's better. Eh, why not? Oh boy. Wow, we just added way more to the debt. Okay then. Let's talk. 68%, not great. Oh man, it flatlined. Yeah, maybe 10 tax hikes. Maybe not a good idea. Hmm. That's a lot of debt though. Hmm. 1.5 billion. Oof. We spend a lot to here. We spend quite a bit. Yeah, Gardens of the Revolution, please. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then, of course, we want to do look outwards as well. Oh, and Comey's won! They beat the WRRF. Good job, Comey. Good job, Zidanev. Anything else down here? Maybe, yes. Hiring for instructors. A little bit more debt. Just a fifth of a trillion dollars, that's all. And a policy of liber liberation, huh? Oh, factory output goes... Oh, that's really nice, actually. That's really, really nice. A policy of protection. Oh, if you want to build better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. Nice. Despotism, an eye to the world, socialism. Policy of protection. Welcome to the rehabilitated... Uh, we gotta do a policy protection. The Security Council, after some deliberating on the issue for some time, has announced a policy protection. The last thing we need to do is anger the likes of Japan or Germany and spark another war to devastate Russia. Should the socialists and anarchists liberate themselves from their oppressors, or begin a campaign to do so in their own nation? They'll have our full support, but not our weapons. Besides, nothing good can ever come out of intervening in a foreign conflict. Just look at the US. It's doubtful they ever expected it to be in South Africa as long as they did. And someone also says we should do Victoria 2 Portugal campaign. Maybe sometime. Not sure when, but sometime. And someone says, how do you, like, how do you get TNO to work when there's an update for TNO? What you want to do is you want to go to your Steam library, right-click, Hoi4, go to Properties, and, like, go to Betas, I think. And then you got to choose an older version of Hoi4 to run TNO. So, that's how, that's how we can still play TNO or another old mods uh, when there's an update for the game. So, that's what I almost always do. That's what, that's what I literally do. So 70% sucks, man. That sucks, bro. Uh, we might... I don't want to do that. How much are we... How much benefit are we getting from this? Just the actual, actual effectiveness, though. Uh. Actually, what's our death ceiling, too? A death ceiling is 125%. That's not bad, but... PUs from trade. How, how is that coming along? My last couple. What are we missing here? Artillery still? It's always artillery and support equipment, huh? Well, let's get more up with them. Does it cost us money? Yeah, it does. But we already have, like, 100% stability. Weekly manpower is not bad, but... Don't really need to do that. So... Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Not too shabby. It cures anarchism. A lot of anarchism. Policy protection? Yes, please. Industrial warfare, huh? Three production units increases your GDP. That's not bad. Surrounded on all sides, Yevgenia Tarantuta vac vacantly stared out of the window from the grand office of the Pietro Sieda. The large crimson drapes covered bundled neatly on each side of the large glass, contrasting the predominantly white color scheme of the room. It fit her very well, even if she thought the room was a little, well, big for him. If you want to be a better army military professionals, then please go right ahead. Uh, 
as she put it. From all her years accompanying Siuda, Yevgenia knew one thing about the man, he was certainly larger than life. Her window gazing was interrupted by the sound of boots clicking on the floor tile. Peter was here. Sorry, Evgenia, got caught up with the Congress. I hope I don't keep you waiting for too long. Peter removed his coat, hanging it up on the rack next to his desk. Oh, no, Peter, no, worry, no need to worry. I was just appreciating the view, she said, still staring out under the city below them. I said to behold, isn't it? You know, Peter, I look, as I look out over this horizon, I realize something, she said, holding her hands behind her back. This whole world wants us dead. Oh, Evgenia, Siuda joined her by the window. There's so much more out there than for us than hate. There's people who have enjoyed much more freedom than ever before. People who are not dreading, but excited to raise a child in this new society. At the same time, there's so many still living under the authoritarian jackboot. Evgenia could see his face tense up in the reflection of the glass. Even if they want us dead, that only means we are doing something right, something we believe in. Evgenia smiled and placed her, her hand on his cheek. You're a good man, Pietro. You're going to do good things. There are so many good things to do. Which one costs more? Hmm. Declare a safe harbor. An out of the world. Solidarity with the world. Different effect. Uh, maintain the flawless legacy is probably the way we want to go. It just makes more sense from a meta standpoint. Role-playing standpoint. But we'll do that as soon as we get this decision done, too. Education? Yes, please. So without military austerity, 1.59 billion. Oh boy. Oh boy. Motion pass. Great. Alright, show motions. Black Army training. Oh, sta standardized? More division organization? Yeah, that's, that's actually really nice. Uh, anything for the comrades? Yes. Oh, negative four. Oh boy. And weapons? Yes. And if it's for the best. Man, fuck, there you go. Not bad. Welcome to Rehabilitated. Oh boy. Yeah. We cannot abandon our roots. The militia organization that is the Black Army is one that is formed by the people. We cannot go back upon this legacy now. Abandoning this legacy would mean fundamentally changing the foundation of our society. Additionally, given that the military is so intertwined with our government, by instituting a top-down structure of organization of the Black Army, we would be inviting corruption and the threat of a coup from the ruling generals in a newly reformed army. For the safety of our anarchic way of life, despite its faults, we must maintain an election-based military, dealing with the most prominent enemy. Have you seen what is out east, Comrade Stepanov? You have Guinea bit her lip in restraint. Oh, look at that. Moments ago, the man had the nerve to tell her that her draft for the international agency was, as he put it, full of spirit, just misguided. He didn't know the first thing about what, was, what happens in the Far East, and yet he had the nerve to talk down to her like she was some insolent child. She was ready to tear her apart, stepping out limb by limb, yet her years of diplomatic experience gave her restraint. Our very first worst enemies, comrade. The White Army, parading around our own horses, touting some Tsar they've stolen from a faraway land like the previous century never happened. Chairman Yagoda, who I am sure we are all familiar with, base his operations not too far from our initial base in Kansk. Not to mention literal fascists who attempt to spread the Nazi plague from the East. To say we need to focus our attention outwards, comrade Stepanov, is to an insult to all we are fighting for. We have made significant progress, yet this is true. But all of us can be ripped away from us at all of this can be wept, ripped away from us at the drop of a showcasing if we waste our money and resources on fruitless endeavors in America. You're getting it panted. So much for diplomatic training. Luckily, Pitya uh, interjected before Stepanov could lecture her back. Thank you very much, Yevgenia. Now I know I speak for the entire assembled body here when I say that you have put the best interests of the Siberian people at the forefront. Fix your problems at home, then turn around. Oh, yes. Spend more money, but this will help out our agriculture and slightly decrease coring times and port heavy machinery. Yeah, at this point, I think I'm heavily considering because once we get 100%, I'm going to drastically lower the debt to, GB, G, blah, blah, debt to GDP ratio. My apologies. Mispronunciations all over the place. I'm going to cut down probably as much spending as possible, but go back to schools eventually? Yes. Wait, research facilities monthly change goes down. At least we got modern ones, that's nice, but still. Oh wait, we can increase it? Oh, oh well, I've got seeing as political power here. Oh. Oopsie. Oh. Wait, so what does this what does this actually do then? More growth. It gives you a little more growth. I mean we don't agree to need that extra political power anyways, but okay. How many consumer goods are properties provided with? Providing more, both our economic growth as well as our stability will benefit. We'll also need uh, to devote more of our resources towards securing consumer goods. Providing fewer consumer goods for less economic Oh, so if you max this out, you can get more consumer goods growth then, huh? That's not bad. Eh, that might be a smart thing to do then. Please. How's building going along? Alright, bases. Everything else is looking pretty good, though. 
this is from the Liberation War. The wars we fought in our efforts to reunify Russia were not the one by sheer brute force and manpower like those in Russia has fought in the past, but rather the cunning and finesse of smart generals and strategic thinking. We can use these reports and plans and draw on the experience of these generals and commanders to continue developing the military doctrines that the old Soviet government had begun developing in the Second World War already. We began collecting and teaching the strategies used in previous conflicts in our military schools, the People's Militia. Carmen Valentiv sloppily scribbled his signature on the last of the heaps of papers precariously stacked on his desk. Approvals, denials, or supply requests. Valentiv dealt with them all. Most generals despise the bureaucracy, and to some extent Valentiv was no different. He stretched an elastic band around some thick bundles of papers and went to toss them into the bin his secretary collected at the end of the night, but found it missing. He shrugged, whatever. He had to walk past her desk anyway, rising with a stretch. Valentiv snuggled the papers under his armpit and exited the room. Right away he could already hear her laughing, or hear her laughing in general. Not uncommon, but certainly not normal for the office. Valentiv traveled down the hall and to the left, the voices of the lobby becoming audible. See that? A scar. That's where you get or get from multiple campaigns. See, I shot a Red Army guy from three kilometers away. It was pretty impressive on the desk. Lean, they recruited, badgering a very bored and disinterested secretary. It was clear he had been at it for some time with little fruits of his forest labor. Valentine sauntered up and plopped his desk or his paper on the counter. Evening, comrade. Here you shot a guy from three meters away. The distressed newbie began to stammer out some sort of explanation, but Valentine only chuckled and held up a hand. No, 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 no. That is extremely impressive. Why don't you show the fine lady here some of your shooting prowess? Valentine unholstered his pistol and thrust it into the boy's hand. Here, shoot me. Point blank. Valentine stared deep into the boy's eyes, his smile replaced by a scowl. For some time, the boy stood up there, shaking, before dropping the pistol to the ground. Valentine retrieved the weapon and returned it to his belt. That's what I thought. Listen, kid, the RB isn't a place to pick up girls. You have an obligation to defend your commune and nothing else. I was ready to lay down my life for a point, and that's what every man and woman and everyone in the Black Army swears to do. If you can't do that, I advise packing your crap and leave. Valentine nodded to the secretary, adjusting his cap and briskly walking out the door, leaving the stunned recruit pale as a ghost. A soldier must be devoted to his brothers and nothing else. Worker training? Debt? Awesome. So now we can use more political power. Because we need more growth. 76 points for Oh my goodness. Almost 5% though. Text. Oh. Let's take a look here. 2 billion in deficit. That's quite a bit. I'm not going to lie. That's quite a bit. We're spending a ton of the military. Even though we do have 31 divisions. What we really need to do is just go to war. Am I making these guys too fast? I might be. Maybe, maybe not. How many divisions does Irkutsk have? Or, yeah, basically Irkutsk. Not a lot of manpower. We got a lot of divisions. What do we cut down on them right now? Go one more. Go one more for you guys. Reinforce the soldiers. How about industrial warfare? I'll do that one first. The Great War of so many decades past was catastrophic, not only in its casualties, but also in its material consumption. The lesson had been learned by all nations of the world after the war. Uh, the development of heavy artillery tanks and aeroplanes meant that uh, that the future, the wars of the future would demand a strong industry to support the militaries of the future. The theory has been proved correct. Our military conquests have only been possible thus far due to the hard workers at the home pushing out thousands of guns, artillery, and planes month after month. Unfortunately, the farther military ventures out into Russia, the larger our military needs to become to defend our long borders. Thus, we must expand our military industry to keep pace with our uh, industry. Pretty much. That's not bad. Concession. What's well, only fair? There you go. Seven to one. Oh, maybe we need any... Oh, whoops. Well, whatever. Whatever. Hey, 73.2 billion. Not bad. Hey, that GDP went quite a bit up. 5% is not bad, too. That's kind of nice. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty nice. Even though that deficit is god-awful. Yeah, once we hit 100%, I'm going to start just cutting. Just I've, We've got to cut here. Cut here. Cut here. You give an inch, and I'll take a mile. Mr. Shrinko cupped his face in his palm with boredom. Well, maybe it wasn't boredom, but maybe it was disbelief. More than likely a mix of the two. He had much better things to do than listen to some hot shot from the big leagues, who thinks he's better than any man who's ever served. Mr. Shrinko had seen the whites of the Nazis' eyes. He'd eaten dogs. He saw the brutality of the Nazi war machine. What did Valentine know? He fought the Finns, the weak and pathetic people they were. Mr. Shrinko was shaken from his thoughts by Valentine. Androni, are you listening to a word I say? Valentine snapped, verbally and physically, snapping his fingers in the face of the old man to wake him from his daydreaming. Mr. Ringo swatted Valentine's hand from his face. Yes, I've heard all of your speculation and theories. Your words carry lots of weight while containing these four corners, but you have become so out of touch with the field of battle, all you do is speculate in this room. 
Valentine desperately trying to keep his cool, hissed through gritted teeth. I have committed my entire life to the struggle. We have both watched too many young men die in the chaos of war. I brought you here not to spar with you, Androni, but to lay the groundwork for generations long after us. To continue the battle against the state, Valentine gagged his contemporary's reaction, finding it apparent that he wasn't making any progress. Valentine, ever the strategist, tried a different approach, pulling up a chair and, and sitting in front of him. He met eyes with the old man. Neither of us will leave until we solidify doctrine for warfare going forwards. I will write down on this paper one thing I deem essential. And then you will do the same, once we have our list assembled. We can each cross we can each cross off one of each other's points. Valentine started writing down the necessity for autonomy for the officers. Mr. Schrenko eyed the paper with suspicion, but eventually relented, jotting down his claim that air support was the most have for the next four hours, or the next couple hours. Each man took turns writing down what they deemed essential for the modern black army at Doctrine until the uh, sun descended under the hills. Two heads, one plan, a lot of conflict. Reinforce the soldiers. The military machine continues to demand more and more manpower as we spread out across Russia. In order to sate this demand, we must boost for recruitment in newly conquered territories. While volunteers have always been welcomed for the newly integrated territory, the amount of volunteers joining up was always tiny, simply put, of course. Uh, conquered people do not take well to the conquerors, even though we have afforded these people almost complete autonomy. We must begin a mass recruitment drive in the new communes and endear ourselves to the populace with hope. We should see increased enlistment in the new territories. Oh, wait. G that GP one actually went down. Because we got that little boost in GDP, that's why. That's the only reason why. P from trade, that sucks. We need more production units, man. How are we building up the army bases? Looking okay? We have built up one already, which is nice. West Mongolia, improve manpower. Yeah, that'd be good too. Oh! Uh, second with South African War? Yes, we've had one. How about two? South African Liberation Front, though. Expo 67? Oh boy, please don't just spam it. Repurpose Soviet infrastructure? Yeah, why not? That's fine. And now we know our political power. And there goes Wales. Goodbye, Wales. Oh, we hardly knew you. Hardly, hardly knew you. Follow the Falcon. Compile the strategies. Play Tachanka. I like that one. Uh, modern armored and motorized technology has once again changed warfare for Russia. Formerly, our design had revolved around building large amounts of cheap tanks to overwhelm the German enemy. While tank production never reached the amount really needed to truly test this military doctrine, many generals had supported the idea of simply overwhelming their enemies. However, research into the tank doctrines of Japan and Germany had indicated a focus on mobility and quality. We should strive to learn from their doctrines and design and update our armored and motorized military tactics. Not a bad idea. Slight dip and went down. Oh, we're out. We, had, we actually went up to 16% as well. Not bad. Not too shabby. How's poverty looking, though? Not bad. Almost 60%. Minus 0.52 is very nice. A couple more days left for that. And, ooh, scientific research. Ooh, that would be nice to do as well. Yeah. We would love that one. Next one should boost up would be industrial equipment, hopefully. Motion pass. Great. Great. Expand the power grid. Um... Three state GDP. Screw it, we'll do it anyways. Alright. Black Army training. Um, I want more political power here, but... Also, uh, I do want to get more political power. Screw everything else. Here, have some guns. Here, have some army XP. And minus one, zero, minus one. Some of them, whatever they need. Great. Now we're two out of six. Two versus six, I mean. Nuclear energy training. Oh, we can't do that one, which sucks. Why can't we do that one? Ah! Gun stuff? Yes. Nothing like a bunch of good guns. There we go. Extraction 3 is very nice. Oh, almost 80%. Holy crap. Yeah, we'll probably slash, slash, slash. To um, tax hike as well, probably. Uh, do we really need more oil? Yeah, do it anyways, because you never know. Pass the Tachanka, my friends. Reinventing the wheel next time. Huh? A little bit of lag, but happy June Arenos, everybody. Happy, happy, happy June. War ain't all it cracked up to be. Up you go, cause squad leader hoisting the scrawny Stefan under the back of the vehicle. Stefan scuttled up the side of the vehicle, trying to get a look over the edges. All he got was, of course, a boot to the face. Watch it, barked one of his squad mates, trampling over the recruit as he took a seat. What the heck are you even doing? You look like a turtle on a show with all that gear. What the heck are, what was he doing? The question resonated with Stefan. He was only 17 and never held a gun to his life, and understood next to nothing of taxes, but what he lacked in military theory made up before in stories. The boy was in love with the ideas of heroism, and what was more heroic than the army? 
Hey, the same squad mate called out. You're going to hump the side of that vehicle or are you going to get over here to do so the rest of the team can get on? Stefan nodded, lunging from one side of the armored vehicle to the other, with the one on the benches. So what are you doing here? The burly man questioned. Well, uh, Stefan cleared so Well, I guess I just wanted to help out. Yeah. You're doing one heck of a job, the seasoned veteran sneered. Stefan remained silent, always looking down. Hey, I'm just giving you crap. Where are you from? Novosibirsk, my dad. Stefan began to get choked up. Well, when the city came under attack, he tried to get the people of his factory to rise up, you know, to fight for something, and they just shot him and then and there. Your man, the man beside him nodded, understanding the story quite well. Your dad sounded like a brave man, Stefan nodded. The soldier patted him on the back. You seem like a good kid. The man extended his gloved hand. I'm Danovich. I'll help you get the ropes. What, the safe here is true camaraderie. Up next, we're going to go and do an eye to the world. Russia's a harsh mistress, and our neighbors are even harsher. We need to know what they are doing at all times in order to defend ourselves. To that end, we must create some kind of clandestine organization to achieve this end. Should our neighbors begin mobilizing against us, we will know. If our neighbors develop new tanks and aircraft, we will know. If the leader of our neighbor country goes to walk his dogs, <laughs> we will definitely know. With this new agency, the Black Army will have a hand in every folder and an eye on every nation. Reinventing the wheels. Not rocket science, Alexei. <laughs> Laughed Julia, twirling the wrench in her hands. It's so easy some you old Ukrainian guy could figure it out. Come check it out. The woman hopped off of Tachanka too, as Julia called the heap of scrap metal. Alexei shook his head. It's much more complicated than that, Julia. You just don't strap a gun to the back of a vehicle and call it a day. Have you considered stabilization? How far can you go on one tank? Julia rolled her eyes, digging through one of the thousands of drawers in her garage. This is serious. You've got two days to finalize this project before you show it off to the Security Council. Most people don't want to mess around, Julia. Who knows what they'll do to you if you waste their time? Julia turned back to face her friend to her lips purse. Well, unlucky for you, we're never going to find out. That works, okay? I've spent the last six months on it, and frankly, Alexi, if, I, if it doesn't hope, if it doesn't, I hope Valentine strings me up by my ankles. It was Alexi's turn to roll his eyes now, not finding the same humor as his friend. Don't believe me, get in. The young woman slammed the drawer shut with her hips and retrieved the keys off the wall. Catch! Nearly hitting Alexi square in the face, she tossed the keys to the dumbfounded boy, taking up all the good space in their garage. Julia, come on, this is ridiculous, I mean. Alexi looked at the vehicle and then to the keys and then back to his friend. A slight smirk formed on his face, if you say it works. If I am right, though... I get to tell the security council all your secrets so they can torture you. Alexi giggled as he ran to the passenger door. Put her in drive, Alexi. And as you might be able to notice here on screen, I got rid of half the army. That's because I made these guys 40 combo with instead. And actually, the DNO devs did make sure that even if you made these guys 40 combo with, the cost will increase accordingly, which makes sense. Not gonna, it does make sense. So, um, 2.7 billion. Ooh, we do that. How much will we have? 2.7 billion still? Pretty much. Extremely high deficit. I don't want to cut down social expenditures right now. Or even admin stuff. What does admin do? Social security, safety, pollution, science, exploration, science, future, speed. Uh, I just... Mm, I don't want to cut it down. I want to cut it down. I really do. The amount of spending we're doing. But we're going to wait. Great. Yay. More political power. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, more army military professionalism. Might as well. All right, most of these people are opposed, which kind of sucks. I'll be honest, it kind of sucks. You guys, of course we must stand together. We have 57 army XP. Of course we must stand together, of course. Um, negative 3 is pretty bad. Negative 4 is even worse, so not bad. 6 to 2, I think that's something we can definitely get behind. But after the eye of the world, declare safe harbor. The world's become a harsh place. Across the world, individuals are being persecuted for race, religion, ideology, you name it. The free territory isn't like that, though. We were one of the few nations on Earth that profess to be truly free. We must open our borders to the world and become the safe harbor of the world. So long as you do not intend to cause harm or havoc within our borders, you are welcome to join our grand experiment. Additionally, immigration has its own benefits for us as well. The more numerous we are, the better we can protect ourselves. Awesome. And we could, uh, stuff. They're great. Spend more money? Yes. More growth? Slightly more inflation, but inflation can be combated through various means. So I'm not super worried about that one. Solidarity with the world, though. Building a space a spy agency, of course, or a space agency, is no simple task. It requires time and patience to build something so large, important, and secret. Decisions to be made, directions to take. For example, defensive intelligence organizations are often operated and structured differently than more aggressive intelligence services. A focus on long-term infiltration and surveillance may be more important than foreign instigation and smuggling. Neither choice is poor. Just a different way in which to allocate your resources. We will have a different effect depending on our policy. I gotta go back and play as a despotist path sometime. I think that'd be a lot of fun, too. That'd be a lot of fun doing the despotist path. Or if they're doing democracy path, that's fine. That's cool. Uh, 80%, 83%. Oh, that's not good. Not good. Um, growth, 5.6% is not bad, though. That's pretty nice. 0.47%. That's pretty nice. Pretty darn nice. Just military costs so much. And we stopped making divisions. A fail coup in Chile. Oh, democracy's not dying in Dream, it seems. But over here, they have up to... How many divisions? 20-ish. So we're roughly the same-ish. 
yeah, I don't think their divisions are 40 combo width. I could be very wrong, though, but I don't think they're probably 40 combo width. So, well, that'd be good. As operative can be recruited. Very, 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 very nice. And happy September 1st, everybody. Happy new month. Did we get it done? No, oh, we did. Nice. Declare safe harbor. Verily Vorontsov. Igor Rozhenskinskiski. Valerie. Oh, end of the Reichstag. Okay. Compile strategies, despite recent efforts, to reform the armies and enforce some form of basic military doctrine, many officers end up implementing their own tactics or offensive strategy, many times in opposition of what might be optimal. We should endeavor to create a unified military doctrine that our officers can follow in order to further whatever grand strategies being implemented during any wars we might be involved with in the future. This will allow us to get a better understanding of how the war is going and as the capabilities of our troops, instead of simply hoping that an officer makes the right decision. Nice. We could use more socialism here, huh? Not really, but we could use more political power. Alright, so how do we bribe people? 4 and 4 is not bad. Negative 1 is not bad. Yes, please. Let's talk about it. Nice. 6 to 2. Not bad. Um, might as well get that one too, because we can. Ooh. Modernized freight train network. Happy October, everybody. That was a really fast month. Holy crap. Um, but let's take a look. I think I read this one earlier, so if we don't do that, please go ahead. We're going to get a trillion more in debt, which sucks. That's alright. It's only money, right? Only 86.7% uh, debt to GDP ratio, that's all. Journey to the East. Not everything, got everything you need? Yilgar buttoned his jacket all the way up to his chin. You look like an inflated balloon, sneered Ruslan, swinging the backpack over his back. Oh, hilarious. I'd rather rattle off all the things you look like, but the worst thing you look like is yourself. Jab back, Yegor. Hey, if we're going to do this the whole mission, I'm just going to push you into the nearest snowbank I can find. Uh, that won't be hard. Cheetah isn't exactly a tropical paradise this time of year. Your guard grabbed his things and made for the door. We're not going to be relaxing that much either. You know they've got real tsars out there. That kind of people that we got to sabotage. They've already sabotaged themselves by clinging onto that dead ideology. Off we go to defeat anarchy. To defend anarchy, not defeat. To defend. More corruption. Nice. Military egalitarianism. The Tom's Collective Firearms Service. Oh, yes, please. While the people of Tom's are well suited to our style, style of democracy, having already had local democratic structures they could use, they have yet to adopt the gun culture so vital to our defense. People either do not have the interest or the money to purchase weapons, and most do not feel the need to have one, feeling that their armies would protect them. Our presence here indicates that this was obviously not true. Thus, we should create an organization to educate the people of Tom's guys to the need and operation of gunnerinos. No guns? No problem. We'll give you one. Probably. Kwantung Armiku in Manchuria. Oh, there goes Ghana. Manchukuo. Oh, hello. Nice Hitler stash, bro. It's a little wide Hitler stash, but that's right. Vices of modernity. Ooh, ooh, that's really bad. The Kwantung Army. Nice. And of course, Chain to the Rising Sun. Makes sense. Makes way too much sense. Not bad, though. Overall, not too shabby. I just, I'm worried about the cutting. That's why I keep coming back to this page. I'm a little worried about it. Inflation looking very nice, though. 1.7%. God, I wish we had that in real life. But, it's alright. I have no money. Yeah, after this, we're going to keep building up a lot of roads. Like, lots and lots and lots and lots of roads. And, there you go. Nice. Yeah, I, honestly, I'd rather have, like... I wouldn't want more divisions that are weaker. I'd rather have more divisions that are stronger. Because you take less damage that way, so... Since when were the Stepanovs' teeth so white? Had they always been that way? Valentine couldn't tell. The more he thought on it, he, had he ever seen Stepanov smile? Surely he must have at some point, but as much as Valentine sifted through all his memories, he couldn't find the faintest image of Stepanov's teeth. Well, I never need another one. The man was all smiles now as he read over the document. I love this. You, you built this? He swung a fat finger between Valentine and Mishrenko. Mishrenko, the old vain dude he was, jumped to claim the credit. Well, I was drafted by, by myself. I had my two comrades give this seal of approval because of rank. Stepping up, raising an eyebrow, looking at Valentine. That's BS. Comrade uh, Alzheimer's has no idea what he's talking about, Valentine. 
Very class, you attack a man for his age. For his experience, I served valiantly for freedom against a Nazi tyranny, and I do the same today, Mishrenko boasted. Stepanov shook his head and removed the glasses. I don't care who wrote which words. What matters here is that this doctrine is solid. Good luck, both of you, either of you. Mishrenko, his smile pulling up his jowls, proudly walked out of the room. Valentiev shot a confused glance at Stepanov, who simply responded with a shrug. A new doctrine for the army, but military egalitarianism. One of the most outstanding features of the Black Army was its democratic military structure. Unlike most every other army, power was derived not from the top among the generals and highest ranking military leaders, but rather from the low soldiers, who elected their own officers and promoted those who they thought were best equipped. The generals at the top of the military command structure are considered no more equal in terms of value than any other man in the military, and it is precisely because of this that our men fight as hard as they do. Not bad. Not bad at all. And we got less than two weeks before the next thing we get done. Aguirre leans cooperative, huh? Yeah, just... Oh, wait, 90% yet? 87.4. Yeah, I was, I was shot up with that one focus and then just smoke slime, snail climbing growth going up. So much depth. I'm... Hmm. Yeah, we're going to just slash, slash, slash. Tax, tax. Like, ooh, that's not good. That's a really bad thing to do. And I don't want to do it, but we might have to. We don't have to do it, but... It'll make me feel better. That's why we'll do it. That's the only reason why. To make me feel better. Motion pass. Great job, guys. Great job. Show some more motions. Um, honestly, we can get a little more despotists. Get more political power here first. That's fine. Alright, 4 and 4 is not bad. Support 1. Not bad. Opposes 1. Not bad. But happy December 1st, everybody. Hope you're having a great, great new month. It's going to be kind of cold, though, in central Siberia here in December. Of course, you can have a little bit more support there. Of course. Opposes 1. Let's talk. There we go. 6-2. Exactly. Teaching the teachers. This. Pavel held his weapon high above his head. Showing it off to the class is a gun. The unimpressed room did not stare at all the weapon as Pavel expected. Not just any weapon, he continued. This is an authentic 1947 Atovamat Kalashnikova. Or as you may know, it's an AK-47. Who here knows what the AK stood prior for me saying so? Come on, show of hands. Nearly the entire room of engineers, artists, and scientists begrudgingly raised their hands. Oh, don't lie to me now. There's no way you all knew that. Okay, liars. Let's break down the gun to its essential components. The instructor began to disassemble his gun on the table. In the back of the room, the former poet, Yadomir, nudged the person next to him with his shoulder. Hey, he said, do you have any idea what we're, why, we're, why we're here? The man focused intensely on disassembling his gun. Ignore him. Hey, Yadomir nudged him again this time harder. Just watch what he's doing, the man spat, continuing to tinker with his weapon. Jeez, Yadomir thought. What's wrong with these people? Were they so obsessed with their tools of destruction that they forgot what matters most? Basic human decency? Something washed over him. He must call out this injustice, even if it was small. He rose from his seat and stepped onto the table. People of Tomsk, lay down your arms. Remember what we stood for. The future. These murder machines are not tools of peace. Rise now, deny them your hand in the further envelopment of the earth and the war. Yaromir's heavy breathing comprised the only sound of the room. The people of the room looked at him with puzzled stares before praying under their breath that the poor man would get some help. Uh, <clears throat> where were we? Really awkward. Thanks for peace, though. If Russia learned anything from the German invasion two decades ago, it was the utility and efficient brutality of mechanized warfare. Russian troops were cut up and overwhelmed by the speed and explosive power that Panzer divisions had at their disposal. The failure of Bukharin to build a tank force capable of protecting the Soviet Union uh, <clears throat> will surely not be repeated. Our neighbors have, neighbors have come to the same conclusions as us, of course. Developing an armored corps for the Black Army must become a priority if we wish to secure our borders. Oh, and Africa's falling apart, but you know, whatever. Ah, slightly higher. Not bad. Slightly better. 6.5, 5, 6.5, 11%. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. You have to delete the entire army, and then you'll be okay. Militia. Yeah. I deleted a lot of divisions, didn't I? But that should have helped out with artillery. So, we'll make, from here on out, we'll just make 40 combat divisions. I do want to get some mm, tank or recon. Tank recon. So, that'd be very nice as well. How many more days do we have left for this? 34 days? That was quite a while. Oh, boy. And I'm also waiting for more social development here. Oh, we need nuclear energy technology. Uh, can we actually research that? Nuclear and en We can't research that, though, for some reason. Can we actually do that? I'm okay with that. Yeah, can we actually get that one done? Because when I play the Albert Spear, we can do that either. The greatest story never told. Um, if you want to build this one, please go right ahead. Happy 1968, everybody. The system perfected. Uh, Comrade Nestor bounded his foot in the lobby of the waiting room, scanning his eyes around the room and finding no one in it. Nestor produced a small dagger from his backpack. He made a small incision in the wall, matching with the other 27, one for each appeal. He found it a good way to keep track of how many times he had been wronged by the corrupt security council, but it was also to send a message. People don't tolerate self-serving governments, especially around this part of Russia. He looked up to the clock on the wall. It would be any minute. 
Nestor? A fair-skinned secretary poked her head out, of the, out from a pair of thick white doors. Assembly will see you now. Assembly? He, how do you, she even spoke? He booked his appeal meeting with the security council, he was sure. That's the way he had done it in 27 towns before, at least, he thought. They began to blur together after the 10th. She was probably mistaken. The buildings housing the security council and the general assembly were merged during the move to Novo Sibirsk. Satisfied with his answer, Nestor rose from his seat with a grunt, pulling open the doors and walked in. Comrade Nestor, this was the security council. It had gained about a hundred or so members overnight. Hope your wait wasn't too long. Nestor mumbled something, dismissing their concern. Well, it looks like you're in for your 27th appeal. Is that right? Nestor nodded his head. Well, your record seems to fit the bill of an officer. You served gallantly against against the Red Army in Mongolia and continued to advocate for anarchism since. Nestor was in shock. Not only were they, they immediately disregarding him, not immediately disregarding him, the people of the General Assembly seemed eager to welcome him aboard. Very well then, I'll open this, this body to voting on the promotion of Comrade Nestor to the rank of officer. The vote is unanimous and following the Falcon. Defeating Novo Sobiesk was no simple task. While their army might not have been strong as ours, the Air Force certainly outshined ours. We suffered far too many casualties at the hands of the enemy air support to ignore this problem anymore. Thankfully, we no longer need to. Novo Sobiesk is home to one of the largest aircraft production plants in all of Russia, and consequently is also home to one of the largest air fleets in Russia. Additionally, the sea will be serviced by some of the best plane mechanics in Siberia. The free territory takes another step into, of course, modernity. So in area, 2.2 billion. Oh, whoops, my finger slipped. 2.28 billion. Did I even do anything? I'm not too fan spending didn't go down by that much. Hmm. 2.28 billion is quite a bet. Oh, 90%. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Even if we cut this down to as much as possible. Everything's down as much as possible. Inflation's looking not too bad though. Could be better though, but whatever. Motion pass, great. Um, oh, connect and expand the resource fields. Well, yeah. With improved land connection between our capital and Norilsk, and so far as they're possible, we can make one final push for greater resource exploitation in the northern regions. Invest in summertime ports. Okay, yeah, why not? Establish reliable power supply. Yeah, why not? Just costs us money, right? That's all it costs. Any other things we can do here? No, that sucks. Um, I'm a professional, I guess. Might as well, right? More manpower. Oh, negative three is pretty bad. Comrades. Negative two. That's alright. There you go. As long as we'll get it, right? That's all that matters. Because that, we do get it. So our debt ceiling is what? 125%? Yeah. I, when do we get a credit rating? Is it after we unify here? Because, oh, oh. Well, because it's disabled right now. It's locked and cannot be increased or decreased. Thanks for peace, though, my friends. Oh, on the Falcon. 93.8%. Experimental helicopter designs. Let's do that one. Helicopters are one of the many technological advances made by the world while Russia regressed in infighting and warlordism. These strange flying devices are unlike airplanes of the past in that they are a vertical rotor liftoff system, whose benefits include aerial attacks on ground targets and even transporting troops and supplies to areas where a landing ship is not available. The devices have great potential, as seen from their performance in the South African War, and domestic development has already begun. Great! Great, 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 great. More education? Sure. Yeah, 94. Oh my gosh, it just keeps spiking. <laughs> That's a lot of expenditures. Civilian spending is nowhere near as much as this stuff here. Hold on, so it's right now 2.94. What if we throw in some more plans? How much does that cost? 2.94. Does it change at all? I don't know. It doesn't look like it changed that much at all. 94.8, does it jump up to 95.5? Oh boy. Best of construction? That's when we don't really need to take, but we'll take it anyways, because we can. A present Leso Sibirsk. Nice. Whoa, we can learn. Leso Sibirsk, where is that? There we go. Nothing uh, makes sense here. Victor Sio just slammed his fist on the desk. Uh, the document before him, so aptly titled An Objective Analysis of the Military State of Novo Sibirsk, made Pietro sick to his stomach. Miss Shorenko, could, you could expect this kind of behavior out of, but Valentiv? What had come over the man that he signed off on a report praising Alexander Pokrushkin? Pietro leaned back in his chair in disbelief. 
Seriously, comrades, I should not have to tell you that this power hungry estate is this. Peter searched his brain for more harsh words for the general, but came up empty handed. He led it alongside. I guess I just can't believe this whole thing. The two men in his office shared a look. The two fought at every turn, yet had settled on this appraisal of what could be adapted from the uh, a warlord state of Novus Obirsk and applied to a modern free Novus Obirsk. Mr. Shrinko spoke first, looking straightforward and stoic. Comrade Siuda, with all due respect, you don't know the first darn thing about war. Valentine slapped his forehead in frustration. Gosh darn it. Beatrice leaned forward and his disbelief rapidly de metamorphizing to rage. Excuse me? Comrade Siuda, Valentine sheepishly interjected. Beatrice, my hate for tyranny burns just as bright as yours. I find their methods sickening and cruel, Valentine paused, carefully choosing his next words. However, that doesn't mean we can't take something bad and make it good. But Krishkin was an army man through and through, and as such, he left very detailed notes on his preferred method of war, especially pertaining to aerial combat, something we were lagging behind him. Peter mulled over Valentine's explanation, the two military men standing in silence before the hero of the free army. Peter shot an icy glare at Miss Shrenko. If we begin to mimic the state, we will be shocked when we become it. Peter paused, yet I understand your point of view. You got my green light, go get out of here. And burn it too. Black wings above. The Black Army had little experience with an aerial warfare in the past. While we have used some planes in combat in the past, simply put, we didn't have the industrial capacity to scout airmen needed to operate an air force. Given our size and relative strength of our enemies, however, we must create and integrate a true air force into our military forces. We have a vast array of former pilots to educate the next generation of airmen. Somewhat modern designs for airplanes and the industrial capacity to begin manufacturing said airplanes. Everything costs so much, man. Oh, we increased our GDP by 5%, though. For almost a trillion more. Oh, we gotta get that one immediately. That one's I'm, I'm okay with. Yeah, shoot it up. 101%. Oh, my gosh. Um, what happens if we just do this? It's gonna hurt us quite a bit, but... And go into war. I'm looking at the real GDP growth. Temp tax hike. 1.37. Oh, we already cut this way down. Why is military spending so high? I wish if you hovered over it, you could just see how much it is. See, actual training effectiveness. Um, that's not really worth doing either. 5% is not bad though for, though for growth. 50% of more current values. If we do that, it goes down to 4%, right? Eh, slightly more than one four percent, but 0.9 billion because we we got we got to slow this down. This is too much. We're working training and doing this is a really bad idea to do it. <laughs> I was trying to cut down, but whatever. I power the drill assembly. Yeah. Let's talk. No political power. That's fine. There you go. I'm just worried about this. 101.3 percent. Jesus Christ, it's so bad. I mean, if I have to, I would completely disband the entire military. No, I won't. I, I lie. I won't do that, but Jesus Christ, it's so bad. A cold cabin. Composed and nursed a glass of whiskey on the table. Outside was a frozen tundra of heck. He never stepped outside. He wouldn't if his life depended on it. He swirled the glass, bitter scotch, fitting for a bitter old man. Come off, offered to fetch him something with taste, but the composer denied him each time. A sickly man rose from his seat in the dining room and dragged himself to the frigid, poorly lit living room. For a living room, it was quite dead. Paint peeled from the walls and books gathered mildew. If one part of the room was alive, it was a grand piano, tucked away in the corner as if hiding from the misery that devoured the room. The composer shambled to its bench and sat, his fingers hovering over the keys, his hands descended to play. A knock at the door interrupted him. The composer trickled to himself, very fitting. As he hobbled to the door, the man smiled. He wasn't supposed to answer, but he was going anyways. He could see why these people rebelled all the time. It felt good. Dimitri, said the man at the door. He spoke to him like a child. We know. The confidence struck a chord with the composer, making him grin. You're proud of yourself, then? Just come inside. The old man turned and retreated back into the house, his guest following suit. He pulled out a chair for the stranger and sat in one of his own. Is he here? Who? Kamov? So you know why I'm here. The composer threw back his head in laughter. Of course you came for the helicopter. I don't know why Campbell thought he could hide such a creature. The designs are on the second drawer of his nightstand. Dimitri grabbed the hand of the stranger and poured his soul into his eyes. Do some good, yeah? An army for liberation. Not bad. You lose attack and defense of court territory, but you get more attack overall. An army for self-defense. More socialists, so communists become more pacifist. More organization. More division defense. The purpose of our militia has always been to protect, not to harm. The Black Army is not like the terrorizing force of Yugoda. They fought for domination and power. We fight for peace and bread. Our past conquests should have little bearing on the future. In order to preserve the dignity and integrity of the Siberian Black Army and the Free Territory, we must prevent ourselves from falling down the same tyrannical path our predecessors did. And perhaps in doing so, we might finally find prosperity. Maybe. We have production units. Nice. Which I'm still not 100% sure what to do with these guys. Because I want to spend more. We need... 
more stuff here anyways, but like, um, is it, we have, we have so much. We are limited to using 160 of these units due to power grid. Well, I mean, we're pretty good on it. Consumer good production. Can we send to multiple less efficient workshops? Balance the production lines? Oh, that's fine. Double the number, which if you want to eat more like fraction-y stuff. Honestly, we could probably build ourselves up here, maybe a little bit more. Well, that's fine with me. 0.94. I'm not sure what else we can do here. We're not growing that much more. The debt keeps going up. We can do civilian Australia, but that's not going to do very much. Military spending. Okay, so what's eating it all up? Maintenance funding? Logistics funding. Unit upkeep. Procurement funding. Factory output. R&D funding. Research speed. I wish we could go down even lower if we could. Oh, at least that's slightly better, 100.9%. It's better than 101%, so. We'll see. The debt interest is 0.1%, which is really good. 0.1% is pretty darn nice. Not gonna lie, that's pretty darn good, so. We'll see. We'll definitely see. We get more political power, too. And we have to wait until 69 to do this? Yeah, once we get these guys, um, I might not just improve anything and just, like, cut down on the debt, maybe, if possible. We'll see. Black wings above all. Nice. And let's see if there's anything for this one, too. An army for self-defense. More socialism, please. Base bleed, very good. 68, of course. A little bit ahead of time. An advanced infantry rifle. Oh, wow, that's a lot better. Yeah, let, oh, wow. Our death is a billion, though, but our real GDP growth shot up. I don't understand how this works sometimes. I really don't. I mean, yeah, inflation could be better. And we can switch this around, but I want more growth. We just need more growth, period. Yeah, I don't want to lower social expenditures at all. I want it to be as high as possible, but... Hmm. Kind of sucks. And I do want to wait and see if there's any sort of event here. Oh, look. We're going to... Uh, rudimentary factory lines? Okay, so military procurement costs. So we get 10% more output, construction speed, consumer goods production factor, GDP growth uh, multiplier, naval industry cost. Okay, that's not bad. Military procurement costs, huh? Which, you know, that's fine. That's fine with us. 86% stability, though. Oh, there we go. Excellent. Happy June, everybody. So how does that affect our economy? 4.2%, that's not as good. That's kind of worse. And some down, which is nice. Oh, this shot up quite a bit. I like that. Which is fast. Great. What other motions can we do here? Honestly, get more despotism. That's fine with me. Negative one, send them whatever they need. Yes, please. And six. Great. I love democracy. I love it when it works in my favor. 96.2. 18. How do we get just a solid, solid line going up? German, Germany. Germany. So is that up? Cool. So it's June, and I'll see you when we are ready to invade the far eastern Soviet Socialist Republic. And if there's any other events before that happens, and goodbye, Albert Speer. A conflict of interest. Stepanov tore the jacket off of himself that was too darn hot in this room. A sentence seldom said in Siberia. He removed the cap from his head, smoothing his few remaining hairs over. He observed himself in the mirror adjacent to the entrance of the Dhaka. He grabbed at his fat on his stomach, pulling it. He dropped his shoulders. He was getting far too old for this. How long he'd been fighting? How long he'd been acting? How long was he going to wait? The general shook the thought from his head. It was a long game worth playing. Nobody who ever rushed to power stayed in. As he walked through the bathroom, he let out a groan. His knees were giving out on him. Two, two little years spent on charging in a battle and far too he spent playing them. Ivan turned to the on the faucet, still hung up on the conundrum that had plagued him for years. On the other hand, those who waited for power did not get uh, long to enjoy it. Stepanov cupped the cool water in his hands and brought it to his face. Three knocks came from the door, Stepanov's side, letting his head lean against the wall. What could it be now? Begrudgingly, Stepanov returned to the door and answered it before showing him exactly what he pictured. A scruffy kid. Was it so much to ask for just people to act like people? What do you need? Good evening, comrades, say you. Oh, I apologize for my tardiness. I just enlisted. I came from out east of get, getting myself acquainted. Stepanov raised an eyebrow to the man. He knew naively, or naively, naively. He could see it from kilometers away, tasted it in the air. He loved it. The recruit let out a nervous chuckle to fill the awkward silence. I had a message for you from Comrade Valentiv. He told me he would have radioed in himself, but there was only one broke in the middle of the expedition. They've ordered to go to Tartarsk, but... 
They have orders to go to Lezo Sobirsk. That's what I told about Antiv. Stepanov interjected. I'm very tired. It's late. You have your orders. Run along now. Stepanov quickly slammed the door on the soldier's face. Well, he thought maybe it would pay off all in the end. The long game is the one with the largest prize. We lose political power, stability, the shot heard around the world, in which we're still waiting for the Far Eastern Soviet Socialist Republic to, fight, to go to war with us. And our GDP ratio is 103.6%, which kind of sucks. Um, if we need more political power, so we can raise up more taxes, but the shot heard around the world. I trust you retrieve the information I requested. Marco just returned from Novosibirsk, from civilization, finally back. Go look at that. <clears throat> oh, God, my apologies about this. It's lagging so hard when it tries to autosave and update everything every month. Oh, my goodness. But, uh, so from. Finally, back to the cold and somber wilderness. He was honored to be chosen to serve under Comrade Valentiv, even in the frozen huts of the Far East. He had heard the stories. Valentiv was uncompromising, but passionate, not, not just bitter like the a-holes where he came from. He fought for what he believed in. Uh, that was something Marco could look up to in a commander. He was not only willing, but eager to lay down his life for Valentiv his, for his commune. God, it felt so good just to have a purpose. Marco did not see combat, however. He saw his comrade setting up tents as he climbed into the truck. He had never met Comrade Suda, but his name was unavoidable. When Dimitri gave him the dress of the commander of the Black Army, he felt giddy to meet Comrade Siuda but found him irritable. Of course, Comrade Valentiv, we are under orders from Comrade Siuda to go straight to Leso Sobirsk. Valentiv fur furrowed his brow. Seriously, that's what he said? Well then, Stepanov took the goggles from his forehead and pulled them over down his face. Let's go. Arriving in the commune of Leso Sobirsk, Marco could immediately sense something was amiss. The way people poured out of their homes, standing outside and just staring. Valentin was visibly uncomfortable. He spoke to one of the members of the commune, something Marco couldn't really hear. He tried to claw his way to the front of the pack to stand next to Comrade Valentin. Why had they sent so many people? By the time he reached his commander, there was shouting. Whomever Valentin was speaking to had drawn his weapon. The people on the front lawns hoisted weapons of all kinds as well shotguns, rocks, bottles, whatever. Valentin began to back away, but the crowd was too rowdy. Someone in the crowd of Black Army soldiers or for, from the commune fired. Mark, no, knew he had to act and charge forward, slamming Valentin to the ground. It all all falls down as we're still preparing for war, but the joys of fine dining. The room itself seemed as if it were live. Men threw their heads back in laughter and hysterics at jokes that only friends would understand. Candles adorned the shelves of the walls, giving the room a golden glow, sat nestled awkwardly between the antiques and the knickknacks that occupied the space of the other 364 days a year. The beating heart of the room was found in the center. A wall of men surrounding him, hanging onto his everywhere. Peter Siodas booming voice was unmistakable. So I've killed, killed Chichikov, standing beside me, reeks of de like dead deer and alcohol. I'm trying not to puke up that morning's food, although it would have looked the same as it did when I ate it when it came out. Am I right? I know you've seen that stuff. Anyways, he's trying to tell me, says, Pietro, I think I hit a deer on the way here. And I turn to him and say, keep in mind, he stinks like death itself. And I say, oh no, that just was just Mishirenko wandering out of the mental facility again. The table exploded into laughter, save for the man at the head of the table whose mind was fixated on the drink before him. Suddenly the door to the tavern threw itself open. Comrades, comrades, where's Pietro? See to push his chair back and stood, his demeanor quickly shifting from Jogo to Sirius. What is it? I'm here. I don't know. I don't know. It just I was just out hunting, and northwards, you know, I saw the Black Army. They, they were all just in this massive formation in the city square. I didn't think much of it and continued on my way, but I heard shots and men started men started falling. As exhausted man struggled to catch his breath, Pieter turned to his ally stepping up, hoping for a solidarity, but found the man unbothered, smiling as he sipped his drink. What were you saying, Pieter? Oh, no. Even though the growth is looking pretty good. The debt is slightly increasing. Barely, almost nothing, but it's just no. Oh boy, it's not good. Better anti tank is not bad though. Did you get the anti air, or is there, we're still improving ourselves militarily no matter what? And we're building up some more army bases because that's one of the ones we're lacking, as well as a few hospitals and maybe a single prison. So, motion pass, great. We need that political power. Begin the invasion, we could. Honestly, it's probably best to just begin the invasion. Um, get some more. What? Wow, we are losing a lot of stability. Organized chaos, poverty rate effect. Unemployment, women's armed services, uh, sexual policy, minorities. Well, we can get more. I'm not sure what, if we can use political power at all. I like communal investment, but let's get some more of that. Let's see what we can do with that one. And that's a 50% poverty rate. Not bad. Opposes? Here, have some guns. Let's talk. Nice. And one more. Negative one. Uh, no, let's go with the other one then. Anything for. Oh, crap. More. More debt. Yeah, that's right. Whatever. Uh, we could attack. I want them to attack us, basically, but... Oh, well. And they do attack us. Ooh, some of our guys are not feeling very good. We need a lot more anti-air. That's what it is. A lot of anti-air. It's all right. Still not too bad, though. Inflation is about 3%. With a 1.6 billion tax temp cut. Oh, you know, I'm not going to get it. I want to see what, what it's going to be like next month, then. 103.4... 0.5%. My apologies. Ooh, my ooh, words are hard. Um, 
Hopefully they go to war with us. I really hope they go to war with us. I like getting more factories first here, but... Alright, 103. Below the reserves, critical debt, inflation critical. This is currently under control quite a bit. And negative real growth. So if I just print a lot of money, that can pay off the debt really fast, right? And it jumps up to... Not too bad. Okay, that's not too bad. 6.44% is not bad. We went up by 0.2, which is not great, but... I'll also take that. Let's get land reform. Mm. Okay, increases your GDP by 5%. For almost a billion more, that's worth it. Go and do these ones too, if we can. Oh, we can't do them. Dang it. 105.2%. That's not good at all. But war on the horizon, the winner takes all. Oh. Oh, you guys are fighting... Oh, Omsk fell apart, huh? Oh, free city of Ugorsk. Oh, look at this. Russian National Reconstruction Committee. Oh, Batov is here. Look at that. Pasta. Mr. Pasta. Ninsi Tagil. Pavel. For good to the Liberation Committee. Kostnikov. We have Spets Guru by five. Huh. For Provisional People's Committee of Surgut. Shashin. Okay. Interesting. You guys and you have Omsk and his collapse authority force. So we'll see what happens over there. Um, 19 billion. Yeah, I just want to take whatever they have over there, add it to our GDP, and then just cut down the debt. I, I Just too much debt to GDP ratio right now. Just too much. Well, it doesn't look like they want to go to war with us, which means we have to go to war with them, which sucks. DP victory in Turkey, huh? Apologies for a very long video, but it has to be what it has to be. Alright, so we, I'm going to take this slow ish. Honestly, honestly, we do like really well for some reason. Actually, what happens? I've never taken the enact one here. It hurts our growth. Wow, that's really bad. Repeal. We actually get a surplus, which is really bad, too. <laughs> that's really bad, but... We'll see what happens. I want to try. I haven't tried this before, so... That's really bad for growth. Holy crap. Not bad. Can you guys actually go over there? No. There you go. There you go. Not bad. Losses. 300 versus 3,000. Not bad. Not bad. 105. Well, you can just go there too. You'll probably be all fine. You help out there too. Not bad. Just keep beating up on the one person. Oh, you can just. Okay. Yeah, go there or something. Hey, we, we got rid of him. Nice. Wow, that's a lot of income tax. Hmm. Maybe you can go straight over there. Yeah, that'd be good. I just want to see if we can just cut it down. Let's give it a month. 105.2%. Let's get to June. I know it's not good to have a surplus, but hey, if you want to buy better industrial expertise, please go right ahead. Excellent, excellent, excellent. 19 billion becomes 19.08. Which is not too bad. 104%. Not bad. I just don't want to do a general attack. It's just very suicidal if we do it like that, so. Not bad. Oh, they actually. Oh, are they attacking us? No, just one area here, huh? Well, all right, let's do it back at him right then. U.S. Japanese stocks begin. Not bad. If you can encircle the guy, that'd be great. Um, yeah, you guys go here. Keep these guys in place for now. You good? How about you go in? That might help out a little bit better. Oh, come on, man. You don't want to get in circle here, do you? No, you don't. You really don't. And? Of course, we did cut down military austerity. We did do up military austerity, I should say. There you go. That's pretty good. Nice. We've killed off 42,000. We've got some infantry anti-air. And, of course, it's only 69, which is very nice. There you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Motion pass. Great. Um, Research, community investment. Yeah, that one. Did they not want to invest into each other? Let's talk. That's fine. What's wrong with these people? That's fine. Import heavy machinery. We're going to only have it for so long, so we might as well do that one. Economy-wise, 105%. Whatever. Temp tax cut for civilian austerity. Four... Military just costs so much. My goodness. How many divisions do they have? 20, up to 21... Hello.
We've got plenty of manpower though. Uh, do we have anything here? Yes, infantry. Good. Hit him even harder if we can. What if we just did that? Could you actually win? Looks like overall, yeah, we could. Not bad. Pretty nice. 100% nice. That's doing a lot better then. 20 billion, 20 billion. Oh, actually, mm -hmm, 20 billion, 5% growth is not bad. Everyone about that, please go ahead. Surely aid in our efforts. Very good. Does that help us with our GDP? It does. The more you conquer, the more you take, which is really good. Uh, construction wise, still doing the army base, which is still good to do, probably so. Oh, there goes uh, Vorkuta. Goodbye, Vorkuta. It feels weird not having just these massive armies that I'm used to. But I'm um, going to, have to get used to. Oh, they have a lot more manpower now. Okay, interesting. Invest in construction. Eh, might as well. No, that was just really falling off now, which is nice. We'll repeal the war taxes eventually. Eventually. Nice. Flamethrowers are very good too. 69. Get some better recon if you can. That'd be good, 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 good. We lost 6,000 versus 102,000. is not too shabby either. The very awkward way they're going, but that's alright. 95,000? Or 95%, I mean. Oh my goodness. Yeah, cutting down civilian spending would be a complete waste. Infantry anti tank, good. Military austerity, oh, which is going to cost us a little bit more. But, I mean, we still have a surplus, which is bad, but we should be able to attack definitely much more fiercely now. Ooh, we lost a battle there. 9,000 versus 118,000. Not bad, not bad. Good. Less than 95% already. Yeah, we don't even get any extra political power from doing that without doing that one, so. It does kind of suck, so. Are you trying to cut us off, huh? I see. It's alright. Anything else here? Oh, yeah, we guess I have to do here. Uh, concessions? Not, not yet. We gotta wait for that. Wow, we have like no stability. Holy crap. Why is that? Just dropping all the time. Unemployment, women's armed services, organized chaos. We are at war, poverty rate. Capture everybody's great. Good job, guys. Nice, that's definitely helping us out quite a bit. Even with military austerity. Not bad. We lost 13,000 versus 179,000. You guys keep going in here, that's good. Go straight into there. That's nice. Ah, oh, kill them off. Just murder them all. 93.6. Great. Because this is going to suck. The West Russian Soviet Federation. we got to make sure we got enough divisions for those guys. One day left. And thank you for the PP. Show motions. Uh, mm, keep going with that one. Anything for the comrades? Let's talk. Political power is fine to spend a little bit of. This seriously all negative three. Uh, fine. Whatever you need, it's fine. There you go. Just bribing takes so much. Ninety-four point four. Not as good as it was earlier, but still. How much more do we need? We killed off 200,000. So far. Do you have any other upgrades? Valentine is learning a lot. He's becoming an infantry leader. Uh, how about you? Alexei Kublitsky. He's almost an organizer. That's nice. Get more signs. That'll be good. That'll be very good. 94.4. 94.9. Uh-oh. We still have a surplus. 94.6. Oh, we actually have a dockyard. Oh, do we win? How do we have a dockyard? If we didn't win. That literally makes no sense. Do we get all... We, we literally got all the way to the sea. Wow. I go to Magadan, which... They should be pretty close to giving up, right? If you want, take one of you guys. Come on down here. That would be a good thing to grab. 93.9, nice. Not that giant jump in growth. So maybe we'll spend more on the on this 
civilian side too soon. Um, we can spend just a little bit more for now. How's this looking? Still not bad. Still pretty good. Pretty darn good, not gonna lie. I have extra production units? Nice. Um. Oh, did we win? Hey, we got him. There you go. And now we can spend the time coring all the stuff. More GDP growth, efficiency, passively improve. Um, Cheetah, Amur. Let's do a Kurtzk first. Cool. And regional reunification. More stability, thank you. More naval experience. We know it's the Free Siberian Territory. Did you know that? So we can go back to war in 71. So let's go and begin with some other stuff. Second Siberian War, probably close out of that one. Regional Development, probably close out of that one too. Oh my goodness. Oh, how's this going to affect this? I'm going to put that, please go ahead. Yay! And I guess since we still have a surplus, that's all big old surplus, but anarchic anarchy. Pyotr Siotin and Ivan Stepanov sat side by side for the last time. In bated breath, the two unknowingly would spend their last moments as allies here. Stepanov's cap had been crumbled into a near circular shape as his sweaty palms would squeeze for as long as his thigh, high blood pressure would let him, before relaxing out with a deep, shaky sigh. Siotin had taken off the pin that adorned his uniform and let it dance between his fingers, drawing blood often as it pricked and poked at his pale skin. Around them, hundreds of staffers, elected officers, and assembly goers mimicked their actions, practicing the owner of sticks. Someone should have brought booze. The gentle voice of Tartuta was powerful enough to break the fragile silence. Her quip elicited a polite chuckle from some around her, those who had grown tired of sitting by the radio, waiting for it to spring to life and assure them that their fears were unfounded. Silence had recuperated strength that fell over them once more. Suddenly and mercifully, the machine began to crackle to life. Silence turned to attack and from the static words. Give me that. I'll do it, comrade. Or command. This, the voice on the other end, faded to static again, eliciting Stepanov to smack the radio across the side. Successful, currently. We're operating out of Zenia. Resistance. The audience of the radio whipped their hands around frenetically, seeking anyone able to remedy the poor connection. Unconditional surrender, we won. As all around them, people exploded out of their seats, embracing whoever was closest. Ivan Stepanov and Pyotr Sioda stood. Two statutes, monuments to anarchism. Stepanov's first instinct to indulge in the celebration was smothered by realization he had no control over Eastern Siberia, no loyal officers to bribe, no assemblies to veto. Sioda experienced a similar realization. His message did not extend to the far corners of Magadan. His popular influence had been boxed in by the boundaries of Central Siberia. Stepanov moved first, standing, standing suddenly, nearly adjusting his cap to cover his balding head and set off. Sioda wasted no time, following close behind. Why do you leave me so soon, Comrade Siuda? Follow the perspective of Pietro Siuda and the struggle to fill the power vacuum in the Far East and preserve libertarian anarchism. General Stepanov, where are you off to? Ivan Stepanov! Uh, to fill the power vacuum in the Far East and secure Russia all to himself, which sounds like fun, but I think we gotta go with Siuda just so we can preserve libertarian anarchism. So I apologize if we don't go in the route you want me to take, but it is what it is, but. Winning a game I was never playing, as the Siberian War is drawn to a close. It was expected that the cessation of hostile, official hostilities would mean the end of hardship for the free territories and a new period of integration and further unification could begin, however. Life is never so easy. As Stepanov has begun to establish his own sphere of influence in the former Far Eastern territories, it has become clear as to just how much of a threat this developing struggle may become. As the frontiers across the Baikal become hot with power struggle of the traitor Stepanov, it is now obvious that action must be taken. While Siud has been shocked by the sinister betrayal and from his inner circle no less, his determination remains as resolute as ever. If anarchism is to survive, Siud must persevere. Siud will need to play Stepanov's game in this struggle, lest anarchism dissolve forever. As been plotting against the free territory for years, he must be outmaneuvered. So now we can do something we can all agree on. An unspeakable evil again. Pull the rope taut. Ooh. Look at that. An unspeakable evil again. And pulling the rope taut. So let me know, which one should we do? Should we do the gun that will shoot the crown? Do we do the swastika? Or we do the greatest nation on earth? Let me know in the comments below which one we should do, which will d definitely determine, well, maybe not, whether we do remember the tyrant a black October, or opiate of the masses as well. An alliance with capital, authoritarian democracy, which we probably won't do. Is there anything she can't do, which is probably what we're gonna do. And appealing to a higher power, which we probably won't do. So we'll probably do, is there anything she can't do? But, the victory will be revealed. Well, let me know in the comments below which one of these two top rows we should do um, in the next episode. But if you enjoyed this quite long video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Oh, they're still killing each other over there. Oh, no, wait. Oh, yeah, they are. That's awesome. And I will see you tomorrow as we will try to not screw up the economy too much and hopefully unify the rest of Russia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.